When hosting a workshop, there are three different phases that you need to take into account. So first of all, the preparation before the workshop, then it's the actual facilitation of the workshop, and then the last part is then the summarization of the output of the workshop. As a management consultant, I've planned and hosted a lot of workshops and some have been better than others. And so in this video, I want to walk you through the best practice of hosting and planning a workshop so that you can also do it like pro. Most of the work when setting up an awesome workshop lies in the preparations before the workshop. So you can think about the 2-1-1 rule. If you're planning a workshop that is going to last one full day, then it's probably going to take you at least two days to plan the workshop and then one day to summarize all the outputs of the workshop. So that is something that you can keep in mind when you're planning a workshop, that a lot of the work goes into the preparations before the actual workshop. So when setting the scope, you need to think about the actual why. Why are you having a workshop? because that you can translate directly into the workshop then. So why are we having this workshop? And then what are the results we want to get from it? Why can't this just be an email or a survey or a regular meeting with someone? Then you need to think about the participants. So basically who needs to be there? And you should have everyone that needs to be there and pretty much nothing more, nothing less. Then you need to get into the practical details. Where? when and how. Is an online workshop really the best way? Or should we really meet face to face even though it might require some travel? Or is hybrid fine? Or should we just do it online? So have a think about that and see what really works in this situation. Also think about how you're going to do the actual presentation. Like, do you want to have a separate PowerPoint? Because there are some points that you need to get across. You need some, to have some visualizations. Or do you just want to have a workshop where you go straight into a tool and just stay in that tool the whole time? Talking about tools, you also need to think about what tools do you want to use? So what actual meeting tool do you want to have? Like for example, Zoom or Microsoft Teams, like what is it that you really want to use? What has the functions that you need? And then think about what is the workshop tool? So like where you have the actual exercises. Like for example, is it a Mentimeter? Is it in my row? Or for example, I will be using Scrintle when showing you some of these exercises. So like, what is the tool that you actually want to use for this workshop? And think that through because that will set a lot of the context of the workshop because that's where you do all the prepping. Okay, so when starting to plan the workshop, of course you need to set an agenda. So in this example, I've just set an example agenda. And in Scrintle, you can add like regular text boxes, like all of these. And then you can add boards and cards. So here are boards, it's like a new page. And then you can also add cards, which is more like post-it notes that you can then move into. So when planning the agenda, you should probably start with some kind of introduction or background or something like that, depending on how well everyone knows the subject. So in this case, I put in purpose and game rules. So starting with that and having that as a kind of an exercise. Then I think it's also always good to have some kind of check-in. So if people know each other, then you can have some kind of check-in on what everyone's mood is like or just asking them for their expectations for the workshop. Or if people don't know each other, then the check-in could be some kind of like uh, say your name and a fun fact about yourself and the company you work at or w whatever it could be. Then the actual exercise and then of course when you plan an agenda for a workshop you should always have breaks if it's more than like one and a half hour long because people can't really focus more than that. And then what I also didn't add here, I'll just duplicate this box, is that maybe before we quit, let's say this and set 1120 and then we have through the next steps. So you should also always finish the workshop with some kind of next steps so that people know what will happen afterwards. But I was thinking, let's just jump into these and we can set these up together. So going into the purpose and game rules. So I was thinking, I'm just right clicking, then I can create text and I'll just add a headline, so big one. Okay, so now we have a purpose set for this workshop. We can change this color to make it a bit more fun. 
There we go. Okay, so now we have the purpose of the workshop there. And now maybe we'll just add some game rules. And then you guys are wondering what are game rules? Well, game rules are like kind of expectations on the meeting, expectations on the participants in the meeting. I'll just write some game rules down and I think you'll get the gist of it. Okay, so this is three examples of what game rules could be. So it's just what you agree on before the workshop starts. So basically, in this case, everyone should participate actively. Um, one example could be like when you have group discussions, you use the raise your hand function in um, Teams because you don't want everyone talking at the same time. So that way you can keep track of who's talking and uh, when. And then uh, could be keep your cell phone on quiet mode or it could also be like don't do emails or whatever at the same time. It could, it could be anything. So just what, whatever you want to agree on from the start to get make the workshop good. So what I added was just these three cards. So this is the card function and then you can change between the layout of them uh, right here. And you can change the color as well. So then we can have the, all of them blue as well. So I have a blue theme on this. So there we have the start of the workshop. So then the next step could be a check-in exercise. Um, so what we could do here is then let's just create some text, make it a headline. So here we'd make an actual exercise. So what picture describes me the best? So then let's just add some cards with pictures so that we can, can do this all. So here we go. So now we have nine images. I really would have wanted it to not say untitled, but I don't know how to do that. And I also don't know how to make these boxes bigger. So I guess I'll just have to change the scale up here. So let's make this small maybe. So maybe we'll put the text there and then we'll just fit all the screen. We can zoom in even more. So then we have all of these pictures. So now we have a, a really simple exercise that people can do that, that is just like what picture describes me the best because one of the goals we set up in the beginning was that people would get to know each other. So now they have a couple of different pictures to choose from like uh, either you're adventurous or you're in the military so then you can pick this image and describe a bit about yourself or you're really a people person who love wine taints things and whatever it could be, you can pick this uh, picture. So here we have a full check-in exercise, which is really cool. Let's create our first exercise. So starting from a blank page, the first thing that I want you to think about is of course, like what is the purpose? Like what, what do you want to achieve? Do you already have like an end goal in mind? Because if you start to think about like what you want the result to look like, like why do you even want to do this? Like what, what is the PowerPoint slide that you want to take with you? Or like, what, what is the result that you want to get? Because the exercise should probably be structured in a way so that it fulfills that goal. And also when building these types of exercises, it's always good to do it in, in like a staircase method. So first step should almost always be that people can think for themselves. Because just throwing people out in a big group and just asking them like, okay, start talking that is really difficult so people really don't want to do that but if they get a couple of minutes to think by themselves before and then maybe discuss that in a smaller group not always needed but could be nice and then take that to the bigger group that's always super helpful and that helps people talking more so that is a good way to think about how you structure these exercises but i was thinking for this exercise something that you can do for example if we're setting this up to become a project we can state what it is that we need for this project so let me let me show you a bit what i mean so let's add columns so this is just basically a column where you can add a bunch of different cards in each column. And if you click here, you can add new columns and you can then name these columns. So I was thinking like if we are to set up a new project and we need to brainstorm a bit about what we actually need, then we can think a bit about people that we need to be have involved. And see here, so this is already a super quick way to set up some kind of brainstorming exercise where you can just add uh, notes to each of these sections. So what you can do then is that you basically create an exercise. So let's make this a bit better looking. Then we can make a 
priority based on the colors. So we can just enter this one and then we change the color of this one to yellow. So then in the end, we can have a bunch of different ideas and then we have three boxes that are marked yellow that everyone thinks are the highest priorities. So that is what I think like most workshop exercises is some kind of brainstorming because you usually want to get ideas from people and then some kind of prioritization because you're in a big group and then you need to decide on what is the most important. So I think this is a really fun way of doing it and then you, you will have a bunch of different ideas in a very simple like framework. So this is a very good way of just uh, getting a workshop exercise up there. Moving into the execution and the facilitation of the workshop. So now the big day is here. So what are the preparation that you need to do on the actual day? Well, you need to make sure that all of the technology works and that you know how it works. So for example, if you haven't sent out a link to your Squintle board or Miro board or whatever tool that you're using, that is probably something that you should do. If you haven't tried creating breakout rooms and that is something that you need to do, go in and exercise how to do that. And I would say one of the most important things when running a workshop is that don't be alone in hosting and facilitating it. Always try to be at least two people because it's a lot to both facilitate the workshop and then trying to take notes and remember what is being said. So it's really good to have someone who can help you with that. In your role as facilitator, it's basically your assignment to make sure that people talk enough, but that they don't talk over each other. So it's really your role to make sure that people are involved, they're there, they're responding to the questions and they're active in the workshop. The easiest part to start with is to start asking direct questions to people who haven't talked as much. Because some people, you know, like really like to think before they speak and sometimes they just don't get to speaking. So then it's really good to just ask a direct question like, okay Robin, what do you think about this? So kind of keep a mental note of who has been speaking and who has not. And then on the other hand, it's also your role to make sure that people kind of stop talking so you know you can always blame the time management like for example if someone has been talking way too much then you can always like time kind of interrupt them and say like okay 10 seconds more because we need to get through everyone like I want to hear what all of these other people have to say as well also something to be aware of when you're facilitating a workshop is that you need to be flexible because even though you're really good at like time boxing, how long time things will take, it's always really, really difficult to you know, really know how long time things take because sometimes a topic that you thought was complex might be really quick to go through or it's something that you thought would be easy that you realize that, okay, there are some things here where people do not agree, so we need to have a bit more discussions. So even though you have a set time schedule and you have time boxed all of the activities, it's always good to be a bit flexible and, you know, continuously align on, okay, let's take 15 more minutes here. Let's shorten this other part because we need to get these discussions clear. And then the last part, that a lot of people usually forget is the summarization of the workshop. So there's nothing worse than participating in a workshop. You do a lot of good things and then just nothing comes out of it. So when you're facilitating a workshop, you really need to make sure that you have outcomes from the workshop. So decide what it is that you want to do. Do you want to email out the results? Do you need a follow-up meeting? Do you, is this a part of a workshop series? Like really think about what to do with outcomes because just having a workshop and then leaving it like that is is just a waste of people's time. Then I think you should also make your own reflection of how you think it went. And if you really, really want to get feedback, then just send a survey out to the people as well and like ask them what they thought, because you will learn a lot from that, a lot, a lot. But be prepared that you it might not be just positive things. But that's good, because that's what we learn from. If you liked Scrintle and want to use it in your own workshop, or for anything else for that matter, you can use it for your own like task management or uh, brainstorming or mood boards or whatever it is that you want. There's a link in the description and you can use the code EMILY10 to get a discount of 10% as well, which is really good. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.